get on Ahab and, uh, and get cracking. I don't know what I'm even saying. I became Will Ferrell in the old get school. Get cracking. Like, hey, what happened? Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. So you guys have been working for Random House now. You for 20 years. You're for like almost 12 years or something like that, right? Yeah. How did you guys find your way into working for the prestigious Random House? You want to start? I'll let you begin because you're going to look at me. <laughs> well, he has to go back further. <laughs> so he's like, oh, how, much, how, how big are these well, chips? Because you were, these I got a chips. Long, I you were a random house and then give us well, the penguin. penguin. Uh, yeah. so Dan, I'll let's give you have the, the abridged version. version. I'll give you the abridged <laughs> version of my career. Um, I've, my entire 23-year career has been in the audiobook industry. Um, I started out uh, at Penguin when I was 19 years old as an intern. They stuck me in the audio division because on my resume... I DJed while I was in college in the mm. weekend. They were like, well, you know, we'll That's just stick audio. you in. It's audio related. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was like, I want to be an editor or a writer. I wanted to be a writer. And I had a writing degree. And they were like, no, just try the audiobook thing. And I realized while I was there that it's, you know, this kind of intermingling of two things. I love books and films mm -hmm. and creating these unique experiences. And I was like, okay, I'm going to just stay out of the printed word. Yeah. I can still touch books. I can still, and I can work with authors way more closely. So I started there. Um, I'm a, you know, I was a writer in college, and that's what I wanted to do. And I fell in love with audiobooks. From there, I moved over to Random House, uh, and now Penguin Random House. We kind of merged, yep. mm -hmm. um, where I've been for 20 years. But you know, my experiences over those 20 years have varied from you know working with presidents to first ladies, obviously, and um, you know Grammys and all that other stuff. But like, there's no. I don't think there's a. You maybe were the first person. You never really, like 20 years ago, you didn't say, I want to get into audiobooks because right. there was no yeah. industry. You right. just kind of fell into it. Yeah. And I think all the old guard, me included in that, kind of just fell into it and then fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And then the new guard sitting next to me over here kind of like pointed in that direction and said, I want to be an audio. I have really? to be honest, yeah. I, I was also kind of fell into it. So my background is I grew up in Midtown Manhattan in an artistic housing complex that's Mostly directors, actors, um, like Larry David came out of there. Alicia mm -hmm. Keys came out of there. So my um, my parents' background, my dad was an actor. But like Dan, I was a writer. And throughout college, English major, creative writing minor. And I essentially was offered an internship by Penguin Random House, or Random House at that point, in audiobooks. They said, audiobooks are contracts, and contracts sounded really boring to me. So I said audiobooks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then I met Dan and the producers group, and I totally fell in love with audiobooks. It was like such an inspiring group of people to work with, and they were doing stuff off the page. And mm -hmm. it, I was just inspired by that group, and I was really lucky to be offered a full-time position the following year. And I've just found really awesome mentors, including Dan, throughout the company yeah. um, and our publisher as well. And people find it really strange that we all stick around, but like Dan said, the job changes every year. I was going to say, you're never, it's never having the, the same. same. Yeah. I mean, the books keep cool. changing. I mean, we have yeah. the longest yeah. tenured yeah. group of producers in the industry. And, you know, people don't leave because, yeah, I mean, in what other job are you going to have access to sitting with, you know, mm -hmm. the BC Boys for three days yeah. and working on their book and working on a creative way in the book world? You know, like you don't it's so get a lot of access. And you just, you, you feel like you're peeking into people's souls and the authors and just the variety of content. I mean, where do you guys see the future of audiobooks going? Do you have any well, crystal ball you'd like to tap into? I mean, we know <laughs> Siri's not going to start reading books, is she? Oh, please, oh, no. Oh, please. <laughs> I think there are certain companies that would like that. Um, That's true. You know, like, I, I think we're a ways away from AI kind of taking over the audiobook realm. Thank goodness. Um, thank goodness. Um, I think, and I think technology has actually helped tremendously. I mean, 20 oh, yeah. years ago, we were doing things on reel to reel mm. and splicing them. Can you imagine? Can you imagine like 20 hour books being spliced <laughs> yeah. together? Like you're wow. searching for the little thug. That's yeah. a commitment. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. And also, the cool thing, man, is in the audiobook world is that, you know, in the old days, you had cassettes, like things physically came to you. 
in the mail. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like you see a title and you're like, ooh, I wonder what that's. I'll get that. And, and you have you're it. listening it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I mean, that's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, the iPhone to me. has certainly phones have just helped us tremendously. Yeah. And I jumped on the flight and I was like, oh, I don't have anything to read. I'll download a 12 hour book in three minutes and I can listen to it right mm-hmm. now. Completely. You know. So I mean, where is the industry going? I think. You know, we started to see how the industry's changed in terms of just like voice becoming so much more important in people's lives, like yeah. Alexa mm-hmm. and home speakers and things like that. That's only going to facilitate more content yeah. coming out and unique content through yeah. those different devices. Um, I think that's the next step in all of this. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and also just, you know, I, I think we're, to some extent we are rolling back the clock too. I mean, I found in the last year that people are doing a lot more kind of radio dramas and like yeah. going back to the old school mm-hmm. BBC way of doing things um, here in the US. And people are like kind of growing accustomed. To like we're finally catching up to the what UK they've been doing. and what yeah. they've been doing mm-hmm. and kind of radio drama stuff. But, you know, every year I would say we have a book or two that I'm like, well, we've never faced this before, mm-hmm. you know, but I think everyone wants to produce their content in audio in some form. Right. So when people walk into my office or a producer's office and say, look, I know this is heavily, there's a lot of images, there's a lot of heavy, heavy design in here. How can we adapt it to make it audio friendly? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. the book that you and I worked on together was yes, like that. Yes, that was um, a blast. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I remember, yeah you, were, you were on a high that for that was whole so fun. week that you And recorded. Arthur Insano was the director. Yeah. I mean, that was such a dream. Yeah. Um, and just playing, oh my gosh, that was so fun. But I think in general, I mean, look, there's still growth to be had. There are still books that are not on audio. Yeah. And, and as publishers, you know, we're going to continue to kind of help grow the format with just the sheer volume of books that yeah. we're recording. Exactly. And we're going to go outside the box in, in our production in the way we kind of look at a production. You know, like mm-hmm. nothing is kind of off limits to us mm-hmm. um, when people hand us a book. It's not yeah. just... yeah. Well, as they later. say, people just want to be heard, right? Yeah. 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 What, Can I ask you real quickly? Oh, sorry, just, I'm sorry to I'm interrupt. Hogging, right? I'm <laughs> hogging. No, you're not hogging at all. <laughs> but I would like to know so from excited. each one of you, what is the, the main thing that you love most about what you do? Yeah. Oh, my God. There are so many things. It's Besides like so Dan. cheesy. It's so cheesy. <laughs> um, I just love the people we work yeah. with. Whether it's the authors, whether it's the talent, whether it's fellow producers, I just love all the people we yeah. work with. Um, and everyone's very creative and open-minded and down to earth in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, that I just love getting into interesting conversations, whether they're work-related or not, throughout the office. And again, especially if it's nonfiction, you really get to know people in a very specific way if they're authors, you know? Yeah. Because they're coming to us and they're bringing us their most heartfelt stories. And you get a certain emotionality there that you don't get in a lot of other industries. Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, you have to tell the truth. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't come through. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's actually not cheesy at all. It's like no. really real yeah. and grounded. Yeah. Um, it says a lot about you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to add you, anything, Dan? Dan? Um, I mean, obviously, the team is really important to me. I mean, we've we've built this team over the 20 years I've been there and, and not many people have left. And, you know, that feels good to me because people, it feels like we're, we've built a creative culture that people mm-hmm. feel good about. He's our fearless um, leader. <laughs> yeah. But at the yeah. same time, I mean, I think what I keep coming back to is just, you know, this idea that authors trust you with these books and, you know, there's something about collaborating with creative people that I love. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. people that and people that I never thought I would be able to collaborate with and and we get a lot of access that way to you know to just pick really interesting people's yeah. brains exactly I mean the best sometimes the best time in the audiobook studio is that 20 minute coffee break you're taking with an actor with mm-hmm. with an author yeah. to talk about what they're working on yeah. or you know where this comes from I mean and building building a, a bond I mean I have authors I've worked with over 20 years yeah mm-hmm. um, and how fun because you're always learning you're always learning something new you know don't you feel like you're smarter yeah. <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> you're, like, you're always getting just this new stimulation about I don't think Dan wants to get any smarter than he he's already pretty is. smart <laughs> I would also I mean I think the other thing is that although we love audiobooks which is like I mean it's almost annoying to people yeah. in the office <laughs> Because we're so obsessed with the, you know, the spoken word, and we're always promoting it. Like if I'm sitting on a train and I hear, I see people with headphones, I'm like wondering, I wonder if they're listening to a book. 
months. You yeah. know, like, and, and then when I start talking to people at books, and they're like, oh, yeah, I started uh, reading this one. So just pick up the audio. Trust yeah. me. I read it a lot. May I suggest faster. a few titles for you? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So we have people currently narrating, people that are aspiring narrators watching. Do you have any wisdom for them about having success as a narrator in this genre? Any things I think to, to start do or not out, do? Um, to start listening, to be honest, because I can, I think you can learn a lot. I definitely have learned a lot as a producer just by listening. Mm -hmm. And even little things like Dan alluded to earlier, switching between a character voice and dialogue versus, you know, your narrative voice and the he said, she said, whatever. Yeah. Um, listening is like the best first, first place to start. Even if um, I have a friend who wants to get into it, I'll say, these are the three comp narrators who I think your voice is very similar to. Listen to their books. Mm -hmm. um, there are wonderful teachers out there. I don't think it's necessary to, especially some people just have an inherent talent and so they don't need the teachers. Right. We like to take chances on people too, which is something I really love about our group so that I love trying out new people. I love our veteran narrators as well, mm -hmm. um, but you need a chance. You need a book to be tried on you to see if you're good at this because yeah. nothing's going to compare to being in the studio for three days for that first time. Yeah. Um, again, because we have such a push for diversity, which I think is so wonderful. And that comes from our books being so diverse and us trying to amplify those voices. So if you do have any sort of background, if, if you're, you know, I don't know if your mom is French and even if you're American, you know, maybe exploring those roots a little bit more mm -hmm. and learning to do that accent, yeah. um, accents and languages are huge for us. Yeah. And if you are just a more multidimensional person, you'll be more of an asset for us. So building any of those sides of your mm -hmm. personality and your right. talent. I mean, I would also say, That's you good. know, there's a, there's, you know, the voice is an instrument, you know, your voice is an instrument and like taking care of yourself mm -hmm. physically is really, as you can tell, like I've gotten no sleep over the last two days and I sound, actually this is not my voice at all. I was gonna say, um, man, you sound pretty you have sexy. I borrowed this voice from someone this week. He's like, um, yeah. But you know, I think taking care of your, of your instrument is important mm -hmm. and I think people forget about that. So learn as much about your using your instrument, taking care of it as you can. The other thing is, you know, get involved. You know, whether it's in New York, LA, if you're not in New York or LA and you're in the middle of the country somewhere, there are great resources online. Mm -hmm. You know, the APA, the Audio Publishers Association, has a wonderful website with tons of resources where they kind of, they have meetups, they have WebExes where people just jump on and talk about, people like Julie, they jump on and talk about mm -hmm. what they're working on, what it's like to get into audiobooks, how you can take the next step. They have a great conference in New York every year mm -hmm. um, that hundreds of actors come to and learn from the people that are making casting decisions in this industry. Um, don't feel like you're just because you're not in one of the major media hubs that you right. can't do this work. I mean, we're looking for talented people. Yeah. You know, as I said earlier, it's the only way I can kind of like serve my authors. If like mm -hmm. that guy happens to be in the mountains of Utah, like I bet there's a studio nearby. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can get him. There's in electricity. <laughs> exactly. we'll figure we it can out. get a mic in there <laughs> yeah. and really make it work. So, you know, take care of your instrument, but also get out there. And also what Julie said is absolutely right. Listen to audiobooks. And spend time with other people who are narrating it, you know, narrating books. You know, what Julie said earlier is true. This is a really, even though the industry has blown up, this industry is so tightly knit. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone knows everyone. Producers from other companies know each other. We talk about talent all the time. You know, getting to know the people in the industry and the actors who are working mm -hmm. consistently. Some of the best casting, you know, people that have been put forward have been through other actors. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. calls and say, you need to meet this guy. Yes. Or this lady, she's amazing, you know. Um, and then they're doing 10 books for us the following year. You know, like my favorite moments as a producer are meeting actors for the first time who have never read a book. And two years later, they're on the stage winning an Audi Award. And you're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so get out there. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic, man. Is there a vocal quality that is more... <sighs> What word am I looking for? I don't want to shut anybody Well, out. I mean, obviously, in, in certain genres like commercials, you have yeah, certain more demographics demand. that are mm. in for demand. Books. But for books, I mean, or more of a skill set. I mean, obviously, accents, dialects, 
languages. Yeah, I mean, but, that's most of it. Yeah, I, I mean, say. I think if you're a literary person, you're going to thrive in this industry because yeah. it's not only being an actor, but you really have to understand language really, really yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, we're looking for all sorts of voices, and that's the really cool part of it. And that age demographic sounding oh, voices. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Across yeah. the board. Actually, across I would love, board. personally, I would love more people that sound younger because right. I have I do a lot of kids' books, uh-huh. like middle school books, young adult books, and I would love more adults that sound like kids. You so have one sitting right here. I know. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Ahab.us. <laughs> Stacey, you're going to have to upload the book that you've already done yeah. for them to the oh, Ahab site. It's so refreshing to hear that. I guess you know, you're always like, <laughs> do I sound big, chunky? Yeah. It's, like, I, it's so funny. So it goes, yeah, you can be little. <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to hear you but say that because enough. so many people out yes. there, young people, often or shy away from, sound, yeah. from audiobooks because mm-hmm. they think they don't sound old enough. Yeah, yes. they, or that they need more experience yeah. and their voice to get grittier. But no, we really This is a big people. genre, right? Yes. Oh, huge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's one of the most challenging ones to cast overall. Yeah. Um, For sure. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that, you know, our books are in libraries and I meet librarians all the time and I hear them talk about audiobooks and they say things like, that person did not sound 13, mm. you know? So we're always looking yeah. for people that sound younger because that's a real yeah. challenge for us. Yeah. 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 Um, but all voices are welcome. Yeah. I mean, the books Love are so it. diverse. The, the, you know, the casts are so diverse yeah. in certain books that we yeah. need as much diversity in the voices. Well, the and books. as you said earlier, I mean, Penguin Random House is so on point about diversity. I mean, yeah. you don't produce the same content book after book. It's all over the gamut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is very cool. Yeah. And you guys never produce a book unless it's directed by an in-house director, correct? That's, yeah. I mean, Typically. we certainly, you know, look, every publisher has kind of done, has jumped into doing some home stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're very selective about that. I think last yes. year maybe we did 1,400 books or something, and we, like 10 of them might have been in a home studio. Mm-hmm. Okay. And those are with people like Scott Brick, who have been right. doing this for yeah. years. Exactly. He's done a couple. So trusting... Yeah. But even that, you know, yeah. it's not just a handoff. You yeah. know, there's a process where we're reaching out to Scott. We're talking about the approach. We're making mm-hmm. sure that he's comfortable with it. It's not ideal and it's not the way we like to do it. But, you know, for the most part, I'd say a good 98% of our books are yeah. with directors. But yeah. I just want to say yeah. something yeah. about that real quick because there's so many audiobook narrators out there who do this kind of for a living because the money that they're making is not yeah. that great sure. because they have to record it in their studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have to edit direct it. themselves. Mm-hmm. They have to edit it by themselves. And by the time they got paid, they made they could have made more money yeah. at McDonald's. Yeah, the per finished hour is right? like 12, and so, $12. And I just want to make the difference here that mm-hmm. if you're doing that type of audiobook narration, what we're talking about here today is not that. And it's yeah. completely like, this is like the the top of the top yeah. because your audiobook narrates narrators have careers. I mean, yeah. this is yeah. what they yeah. do. Well, it's, I mean, get out of your home studio yeah. and work with a director if you can. Yeah. It's yeah. really important. I mean, I yeah. always make the example, you wouldn't put five actors on a movie set, hand them a camera and be like, I'll be back in three weeks. Make yeah. A movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know? And right. it's the same thing in audiobooks. you know, like it's not that the actors can't record the book themselves, but you really want don't you want feedback? Yeah. You know, it's only going to make you better yeah. as an actor. And when you go back to do another home studio narration, it's going to improve you in that way too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and not only that, what famous actor out there doesn't like having a director when they're making a great movie? Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You really, really need that person yeah. there to guide Absolutely. the story. Yeah. In the commercial genre, you hear that conversational, relatable, right? Sure. So in the audiobook realm, obviously they want a storyteller. So how, how does that translate? What does that mean? Like what I'm a narrator, I'm a storyteller. In the world of audiobooks, what does that mean? Good question. I mean, Thank I, th- you, Chuck. I think it's, you know, when you're doing commercial VO or something like that, sometimes you're not thinking about the subtext to why is bounty the right <laughs> paper towel mm-hmm. for me? Let me get inside that. <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me think about that. I have to yeah. live with the bounty. Be the towel. Uh, be the towel. <laughs> Um, and I think with audiobooks, you know, like a theater production, this is why I think a lot of our, our actors come from the theater world. Um, you're thinking about motivation. You're thinking about subtext. You're thinking about why people are doing things that, that they're doing in these books mm-hmm. and how can you convey that. And so there's a lot more depth 
to audiobook work than, than I think people think about uh, when they go in. And it's it's what we, you know, what we ask of actors sometimes when, you know, they'll say, you know, get over here in the studio. And you're like, he's yelling at you. Like he's yelling at that person. So let's bring it up. Get over here. Why is he doing that? This is, okay, this is a really urgent scene. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's get that sense yeah. of urgency yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more thinking about what's actually happening, what's going to happen 200 pages from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so like preparing and knowing 200 pages from now, what's going to happen is yeah. important. Yeah. How old your character is going in. Um, you know, so I think that's, that's the difference overall. Mm -hmm. I would also say for nonfiction, people think you have to be very serious in nonfiction, but I, that's where I actually like your voice to be very organic. I want mm -hmm. it to be natural. I, cause that's going to make the content more appealing to me and more inviting. Right. So it's actually counterintuitive in that way. Yeah. So you don't sound like an infomercial. No. Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> well, we yeah. see that a lot. I mean, you know, it's hard. I, I get it. It's hard for actors to kind of readjust. If you did 10, you know, commercial sessions last week and then you're coming in to do a book, mm. a children's book. And like I said earlier, you walk in and you're like, chapter one. And you're like, that <laughs> yeah. is not the tone at all. We're going to pick not that a up. circus <laughs> book. You know, yeah. it's not a monster truck book. Yeah. This is like, you yeah. know, this is a very serious novel about World War II. <laughs> yeah. Julie, I'm going to quote you to yourself. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Uh, Julie's going to get in trouble. I remember you said, you have to continue believing in yourself and doing the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, That's I believe advice. I believe that for everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was raised by two therapists. My dad, who was an actor, eventually became a therapist. Mm. So... I don't know. I feel like throughout my life, I have, I'm always self improving, and I love that. And I love for everyone to be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, in terms of audiobook narrators, there are a few recently who started off good. We knew they were good, and we used them a lot. And then something happened two and a half to three years into their careers where they blew us away. Mm. And I don't know when that switch happened. I think it was just by doing their craft and honing it and doing more books and stretching what their range was, that I'm just amazed at the work they're doing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just keep going. <laughs> well, I think, you know, and I think it relates back to what you said earlier. I mean, there's actors that we work with that five years ago, they, you know, they just dove in. They were kind of depending on their voice and, and learning as they went. And now I talk to them like, did you listen to this book read by this person? What do you, can, I, can you introduce me to her? Because I want to know what she's thinking. You know, again, Listening to other people do the work is yeah. honing your craft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, of course. It's hard to do that. Well, I mean, and with, with every type of voiceover, especially, especially audiobooks, you have to have that confidence. You are, you are the guide yeah. for the listener. So if you don't believe in yourself and you don't have that confidence, my goodness, who's going to trust to go on that journey with you? Completely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we love you guys. We love Ahab.us. We do. We love you guys. Ahab.us. Ahab. Ahab. Um, we're going to put you guys on the spot. Yes. No All one right. knows this question. Ooh. This is exciting. You may not even know the answer to this. Dan I'm is sure sweating. I don't. So you can pick a card, any card. Oh, any card. I want one from the middle. And then Dan can pick his own card. Okay. All right. You pick your Let's card. See. This is slightly scary. What's it going to be? You can read it in your favorite genre of... Narrator. No, <laughs> no do Julie's a Scott, laugh do a Scott Rick no, impersonation. Uh, do your best Scott Rick Scott impersonation. Yeah, your best Scott Welcome. Rick impersonation. <laughs> the voice of Lee Child. The, the voice of um, many, many uh, Brad Meltzer books. The golden voice. I'm Scott Brick. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Listen to me. He's going to love that. Love me. <laughs> love me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's going to go you, first? Scott. You know we that. Love yeah, I eat Scott. Scott. <laughs> I know. Um, okay, who's going first? I'll go first. So am I just supposed to respond to this? No, well, read it out loud so question. that everybody knows yeah. what it is and then uh, and then respond to okay. it. Okay, yeah. it says, how are you aging? <laughs> <laughs> how are you aging? Oh, I got a way easier one than you did. Um, you know, I was actually just talking to friends about this recently. Um, and I always heard this like age old saying that women in particular hit 30 mm -hmm. and that they're more confident than ever. And it, to be honest, I've always been a confident person. My mom always says, I have no idea where this came from. Right. But I do feel just more at ease in my skin in all areas of life. And I think that comes from 
no longer being in the space where everyone's doing exactly the same thing. We're yeah. all growing into our mm-hmm. niches, whether that's professionally, personally, whatever that means to you. And that's wonderful. Yes. I love that everyone's expanding into their own unique person. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm Well, you just explained it. That yeah. was fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> that was like a that was like a conference right there. Yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah. You can have to charge. It's like a TED talk. Completely. You can narrate your own book. You can narrate her own book. It's fantastic. So this one you'll laugh at because you know a lot about me, but have you done a good job of keeping your friends from childhood? Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Which for me is absolutely, Um, you know, what's interesting about my life is, you know, I kind of come from a place where, you know, not many people make it out. And, you know, when you get out of it, you know, I've had some unbelievable experiences, Mm -hmm. you know, like whether it's working with people I never thought I would work with or winning awards and all these other things that like, you know, but I still have the five guys that I grew up with. Um, as my closest friends are like my brothers. We mm-hmm. still were having our annual holiday dinner on Saturday. So cool. Um, you know, and, you know, it's what keeps me grounded and keeps me kind of. Did you, you know, always have, like, what, like, how did you get out? Like, what was it that. I mean, I think, you know, we all kind of got out in our own way, but like, we just, uh, you know, avoided trouble as much as possible. You know, like, <laughs> it was, I love it. How he says as he that. does the town. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> there was so much story in that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was, Your body it, it, language is lying. No, it yeah. certainly <laughs> wasn't like there were bullets flying by our heads, but you know there were a lot of people that never left our neighborhood and never yeah. could uh, kind of like you know do the things that I've been able to do. But the only thing that like keeps me from like soldering a chain to a Grammy and like wearing around my neck as I walk through LA is like my friends would be like, dude, that's lame. You know, like, yeah. you know, like, don't yeah. just get over yourself. Like it's they come really over not. and they're like, we don't even believe those are real. Yeah. We think yeah. you got them off of eBay. So, <laughs> you know, like it keeps me grounded and it's, yeah. it is one of the most important parts of my life. Absolutely. You know? I love Fantastic, it. No, it's man. always yeah. good to have those people that yes. knew you when, you know, yeah. keeps you in, in. I have to in say, life. thank you. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. I mean, you guys are so busy and you. Thank you. This is so fun. Come yeah, this is so fun. Share with all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome here anytime. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We're so excited for everything that's to come and congratulations on all your success and 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 the success to come. Well, that concludes our two-part interview with Dan Zip and Juliana Wilson. And thank you guys so much yes. for grazing our studios, man. You're so great. We love uh, it. Make sure you come back next week with a brand new episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Yes, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Keep up with all of us on social and just remember. You, you always have time for a little buzz. You little, you're the best. <laughs> little best. Hi, I'm Dan Zip from Penguin Random House Audio. And I'm Juliana Wilson. And we just got buzzed. With Chuck and Stacy. And we hope to see you guys all in Ahab soon. Look, recording audiobooks is hard. Breaking in is hard. But the more you talk to people who record books, the more you listen to audiobooks, and the more you hone your craft, you'll make it. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.